Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Janelle and I own a cross stitch design company called Wistful Bird Cross Stitch. PDF patterns and kits of my designs can be found on my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out. So I get a lot of questions from new cross stitchers about how to start their project. And I do have instructions on my website, but I thought I'd do a little video tutorial as well because I thought that might be helpful. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process using one of my kits as an example. And I'm using one of my simpler designs since I thought it would be easier for illustration purposes. So let's get this opened up and I'll show you what's inside. So I'm going to start off by going through each of the supplies separately, just so you know what you're working with. So for cross stitching, you use a specific fabric that is called Ada cloth, and it's woven in a way that creates holes at even intervals. And this creates a grid for you to stitch on. It comes in different sizes and the size number or count of the Ada cloth indicates how many stitches will be in one inch. So the most common size and the size that I use is 14 count. So that means you have 14 stitches per inch. So then a pattern stitched on 18 count Ada, for example, would be half the size of the same pattern stitched on 14 count Ada, since there would be twice as many stitches per inch on the 28 count. So next up is embroidery floss. And this is the same stuff you use to make friendship bracelets with when you were a kid. So embroidery floss is typically made from cotton and it comes in skeins made up of six strands. The two major brands that manufacture embroidery floss are Anchor and DMC. And I use DMC floss in all of my kits and my patterns all list DMC color numbers. The type of needle that's used for cross stitching is called a tapestry needle. And this type of needle has a blunted tip and a wider eye compared to a sewing needle. Needles vary in size, but I use a size 24 needle to stitch on 14 count Ada. So next up we have the embroidery hoop. And these are most often made from bamboo or wood with a metal screw at the top to tighten it. But they're also sometimes made from plastic. And the purpose of the hoop is to hold your fabric tight while you're stitching in order to keep your stitches even. However, I typically don't use a hoop when stitching since Ada cloth is starched and it's usually stiff enough to hold its shape unless you stitch really tightly. But for those who are just starting out with cross stitch, using a hoop might be beneficial until you get used to the tension you need. So before I get into talking about the pattern, I want to talk a little bit about the two different types of cross stitch. So you have stamped cross stitch and counted cross stitch and stamped cross stitch has the design literally stamped onto the fabric itself. So the color on the fabric tells you which color of embroidery floss you need to use for each stitch. So counted cross stitch on the other hand uses blank Ada and the pattern is provided either on a piece of paper or digitally and you count the number of stitches on the pattern and then line it up with where they should be stitched on your cloth. So if you take a close look at the pattern printout included with my kit, you can see that each embroidery floss color has a different symbol. And the key at the bottom of the page here tells you the number of the color that corresponds to each symbol. So some patterns are printed in black and white and only provide you with a symbol. Um, but my patterns and many others do include color as well, just to make it easier to visualize. So your pattern chart is laid out as a grid and each square on the grid equals one stitch. And most cross stitch charts will include arrows at both the top and the side to show you where the center of the pattern is. And that will be important later on. So you would just follow this line here and this line here and where they meet up is the center of your pattern. So to start your project, the first thing you need to do is prepare your Ada cloth. If you're using a kit like this, the Ada will already be cut to size, but if you bought your own supplies and are cutting down a larger piece, you need to make sure that you leave at least one inch larger than your embroidery hoop around all sides. And just note that if you are using a thinner or cheaper Ada cloth, it may also fray along the edges. So just keep this in mind and maybe leave an even wider border. You can also tape around the edge of your piece of Ada cloth with, with masking tape to avoid fraying. 
So once you have your piece cut to size, you'll need to find the center of your Ada cloth. So this is done by folding it in half one way and then the other. So I'm just gonna line up these edges and just pinch it in the center to make a fold. Unfold it and fold it the other way and pinch to find the center. So then you have a mark there where the center of your fabric is. Then if you're planning on using a hoop, you're gonna to need to mount the Ada cloth in the hoop. So you just unscrew the screw at the top of the hoop until it's loose enough for the center ring to slide out. And then separate those parts. And then you place your Ada cloth over the center ring. As centered as you can get it. And then put the outer ring on top of that and press down. If it's too tight, you can loosen the screw a little bit more and try again. So then you just press down until the fabric is sandwiched between the two halves of the ring. So once that's done, you need to tighten the screw to make sure that your fabric is secure. And then just pull at the edges of the fabric to make sure it's tight. If you notice that your fabric is too far to one side, I would suggest unscrewing it again and just trying to get it a little closer to the center. So once you've got your A cloth all ready to go, the next thing is to prep your embroidery floss. So the first thing you need to do for that is to take a look at your pattern and choose which color you're going to start with. <clears throat> so I would suggest starting as close to the center of your pattern as you can. So find a block of color near the middle of your pattern, note the symbol, and then check the key to determine the color number. So for this pattern, the center is right here. So right below that is a large patch of this lighter brown. So we're gonna start with this. And you can see the symbol is just a white dot. And then down in the key, it says that that is color 869. So my kits include cards with pre-cut embroidery floss. So you'll just need to grab one piece of the color you need. But if you're buying your own supplies, you'll need to cut a length of floss. And I would suggest no longer than the length of your arm, just to make it easier to work with. So here we're going to start with 869. So the 869 is this one right here. So we're just going to take this off the card. And then once you have your piece of floss, you're going to have to separate it into strands. So as I mentioned earlier, embroidery floss is made up of six strands. You can see here there's separate strands in each piece, but you're not going to use all six to stitch with. So typically you'll use either two or three. Uh, for working with 14 count Ada, I prefer to use three, but you would probably want to use fewer strands with a higher count of Ada and more with a lower count. So I'm going to separate out three strands and you can do that just by counting out the number, holding them separately, and then running your finger down the length of it and it'll just unravel itself. So you take the one section to stitch with and set the other section aside. So I'm now going to thread this on my needle, just move the pattern to the side. So I find that the easiest way to thread embroidery floss is to take the end of your floss 
and just fold it in half over your needle. And then you just pinch it between your fingers, slide it off the end of the needle, and then push the loop you created in through the eye. So the best place to start is at the top row of the section of the color you're working with on the left hand side. And you're gonna start the first stitch at the bottom left corner. So each place where the lines meet on your pattern will, will correspond with a hole in your Ada cloth. So the top left stitch of this color in this pattern is gonna be this stitch right here. And it's right next to the center of the design. So we're gonna be starting at the bottom left corner of the stitch. So it's gonna be right here. So corresponding spacing on my Ada, you can kind of see where my folds are in the cloth. So my center point is right here. So I'm gonna go down diagonally. So this spot right here is where we're gonna start our stitch. So I'm gonna start at the back and come up through, again, the bottom left corner of this stitch. And then I'm gonna go back down through the top right corner of the stitch, which happens to be the center of the design. So for the first stitch, you're gonna need to anchor your floss to your fabric, and there are a couple of different ways to do this. So turning the piece around, what I typically do is tie a knot in the end of the embroidery floss loosely, run my needle through the knot and tighten, and then just pull the rest of the floss all the way through until the knot is flush with the back of the Ada cloth. You can also just leave a short tail of embroidery floss at the back of your piece and then stitch a few stitches over that tail to hold it in place. So to finish a single stitch, what you would do is come up through the bottom right hand corner and then go back down through the top left corner to finish your X. However, in this case, I'm actually gonna undo that part of the stitch because here on our pattern, we have three stitches in a row of the same color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch the first half of each of the stitches So you see here we have three diagonal lines and then I'm going to go back the other way and finish off all three stitches. So using this method puts your embroidery floss back at the stitch where you started and usually fairly close to the first stitch of the next row. So in this case our next row is two stitches over. So I'm going to start one stitch down and two stitches over. So that's right here. And this next row has two extra stitches on each side for a total of seven across. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the previous row and do the first half of each stitch. And then once again, I'm going to just start at the bottom right hand corner of the last stitch in the row. and finish off the other half of each of the stitches.
Okay, so I'm just going to finish off this section and then I'll be back to show you what to do next. And I'm actually going to take this out of the embroidery hoop because I find it much faster to stitch without it. So when you finish the section of color you're working on, you just flip over your fabric. And all you need to do is run your needle under a few stitches in the back. Pull the embroidery floss through. And then just snip off the remainder of embroidery floss. So to start the next color, you just follow the steps as you did before. So checking the pattern, the next color is the dark brown and it's got this hashtag or pound symbol and we can tell from our key that it's number 898. So going back to our embroidery floss, 898 is this one here. So we'll just remove that, separate out three strands, and then thread that on our needle. If you're starting a color that's in a spot that's right next to some stitches that you've already done, you actually don't need to tie your embroidery floss to your fabric like you did the first time. Again, you can just run your needle under a few stitches and that'll be enough to hold it in place. So you can pull the floss through until the end of it is right by the first stitch that you went under. And then you need to be careful when you're making the first few stitches just so that you don't pull the end out. I like to put my finger just over the back of it to hold it in place while I make the first couple of stitches. So from our pattern, we can see that we've got three stitches of this color directly above the first three stitches that we made. So again, I'm gonna start bottom left corner which is also the top left corner of the stitch below and pull the embroidery floss through making sure not to pull it out and then make the row stitches And once you've got the first couple of stitches done, your embroidery floss should be secure enough that you don't have to worry about the end pulling out. So I'll just mention that this color switching method should really only be used if you're starting a stitch very close to a stitch that you've already done. If you're starting a patch of color that's say over here and is not connected, you're gonna have to carry your floss across to that space. And I would suggest instead that you start with the same method as you started the first color, actually tying it on rather than carrying it across. Just because carrying your floss over makes the back of your piece look really messy and it can cause your embroidery floss to get tangled as you're stitching over these loose threads. So at this point, You've learned how to make the stitches and you've learned how to switch your colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish stitching this avocado and then I'll show you how to finish the project.
Okay, so the stitching is all done. And I'll give you a look at the back. Just so you can see what it looks like. Now the next step is to wash and iron your piece. And I'm actually going to skip that in the interest of time. But I would suggest washing your project in lukewarm water with a mild soap and then letting it air dry. Once it's dry, you can iron the back of the piece to get rid of any wrinkles. And I would suggest ironing only the back and not the front of the piece. Just in case your iron is a little too hot, you don't want to scorch the fabric. I would also recommend putting a towel underneath your project before you iron it, just so you're not flattening out your stitches too much. From there, you can finish it however you like. I typically frame my projects in a hoop, and I'll take you through the process of how I do that. So to start off the framing process, you're going to want to put your piece back in your hoop like you did when you first started, making sure it's as even as possible. And then pulling the edges tight and again, trying to even it out as much as you can. And then once you're happy with the placement, just tighten the screw as tight as it'll go. So from here, flip your piece over and then you're going to want to trim off all of the corners. So your Ada cloth is relatively even all the way around. Now you're going to take a needle and thread, just a regular sewing needle, and I would suggest using a synthetic thread. This is polyester. Um, I would advise against using cotton because it's not quite as strong and you're going to have to pull on this quite a bit so you don't want your thread to break. The amount you're going to need is going to be dependent on the circumference of your hoop. I always just guesstimate but for something this small, a couple of arm lengths should do. So thread the thread on your needle. And you're going to want to double up. So basically you just fold your thread in half and tie the two ends together as close to the edge as you can so that you don't have very much of a tail. And if you still have a fair amount, you can just trim it off fairly close to the knot. So I typically start at the top, but it doesn't really matter where along the circle you start. But you're gonna wanna weave your needle in and out, and I just follow where the holes are in the fabric, but you don't really have to. Pull your thread almost all the way through. Bring your needle between the two halves of th the thread and pull tight so that the knot is against the fabric. From here, you're just gonna weave your needle in and out all the way around. And I usually leave I don't know, a centimeter or two between stitches. And you don't want to stitch too close to the edge of the fabric just in case it frays on you a bit. So make sure that your stitches are, are in a little bit from the edge. And just go slowly so your thread doesn't get too knotted. And once I'm about a quarter of the way around the circle, I like to pull it tight. So you can actually help out this process by pushing the fabric in and then pulling on your thread. And this is why you want to have a synthetic thread because you're going to have to put a decent amount of pressure on it to pull your fabric in tightly. So just continue that process until you get all the way around. So once you've gotten all the way back to where you started from, pull the thread as tight as you can without breaking it. And again, folding down the Ada cloth helps. 
and then tie a knot to secure it in place. You might need to do two or three knots just to make sure that it's not going to come apart. Now you can leave it just like that, but I typically will cut a circle out of felt and I'll choose something that has similar colors to what is in the piece that I'm working on. So I'll actually take the inner ring, or at least one that's the same size as my project, and just trace that so I get an approximate size. So you can use the leftover embroidery floss from your project to stitch this on if you like, but since I still have my thread attached to the piece, I'm just going to use that. And I'm going to stitch it on using a blanket stitch. And I will typically pin it on just to make sure that it's even on all sides. So that's a completed project with finished back. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you would like to see more crafty content in the future, please hit the subscribe button down below and give this video a like. And I will also leave the link to both my Etsy shop and my Instagram in the description down below if you'd like to check out either of those. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye. doing? Excuse me, you're in my shot. What? Can you get down? What? Okay, you need to get off my desk. So using this method puts your embort, embort, embort. <laughs> I'd like to check out either of those. I said that weird.